consider the sequence a sub n is equal to negative 1 raised to the nth power divided by n. Now, is this sequence convergent or is it divergent? What would you say? Well, we need to take the limit as n approaches infinity. And if it's equal to a constant, then the sequence converges. If the limit doesn't exist, or if it equals positive or negative infinity, then the sequence will diverge. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity for negative 1 raised to the nth power over n? How can we find this answer? Well, we need to use the absolute value theorem for sequences. For instance, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n, let's say if that's equal to 0, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to 0. So if you can prove that the limit of the absolute value of the sequence is 0, then the limit as n approaches infinity of that sequence will also be 0. And that's the basic idea behind the absolute value theorem. So let's take the absolute value of this expression. So we're going to say that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity for the absolute value of negative 1 raised to the n over n. Now, this portion, negative 1 raised to the n, all it does is it makes the sequence positive or negative. It doesn't change the magnitude of the sequence, just the sign. To illustrate that, let's write out the first four terms. So a sub 1, that's going to be negative 1 to the first power over 1, so that's just negative 1. Now if we plug in 2, negative 1 squared is positive 1, and then divided by 2, so that's just going to be 1 over 2. And then if we plug in 3, we're going to get negative 1 over 3, then positive 1 over 4, and negative 1 over 5, and so forth. Now the absolute value of a sub n, it's going to have these same values but everything will be positive. But notice that the value gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So basically, the limit is converging to 0. Now, the absolute value of negative 1 raised to the n is simply 1. Because negative 1 to the n, all it is is just ones and negative ones oscillating. So if we take the absolute value of that, it's always just going to be 1. So therefore, we could simplify this expression to this one. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over n. And we know that's equal to 0. So now, if the limit as n approaches infinity for the absolute value of that expression is 0, then the original limit, according to the absolute value theorem, is also zero. So we could say that this sequence, it converges. Now, let's graph a sub n. So if we were to plot it, the first term will be at negative 1, and then the second term is at positive 1 half, then it's negative 1 over 3, and then 1 fourth, negative 1 over 5, and then 1 over 6, and so forth. So let's say if this was a continuous function. Let's say f of x is equal to negative 1 raised to the x over x. So instead of using discrete points, we can actually make a graph. It would look something like this. Now, if we were to graph the absolute value of that same function, all of the negative values will flip above the x-axis. So we would get something that looks like this. So notice that the result is still the same. The absolute value of a of n and a of n, they both converge. And we could see why the absolute value theorem for sequences makes sense. Because if the 
absolute value of a of n converges to 0. And that means that the original function must also converge to 0 as n becomes large. That's just how it works. So that's the basic idea behind the absolute value theorem for sequences. So if you can show that the absolute value of a sub n, if that sequence converges, then a sub n will also converge as well.